There are around 7,000 languages spoken in the world today, and an incredible 4,000 of them are spoken in these areas. This is a different map. These are the world's most biodiverse regions, areas teeming with life. Nearly half of the world's plant species are found here and nowhere else. See how the two maps overlap. Unfortunately, both the people who speak these languages and the nature in these hotspots are under threat from deforestation, pollution and climate change. Wildlife populations are declining at an astonishing rate, plunging by almost 70% in the last 50 years. The future for minority languages also looks dire. It's predicted that between 50 and 90% of the world's languages will disappear by the end of this century, most of them spoken by indigenous communities. And with each lost language, we lose a wealth of knowledge about the natural world. How is the destruction of natural resources and the death of languages intertwined? And could saving one help save the other? Local knowledge and care for the environment is often encoded in language. One example is in Hawaii, where the striped mullet fish held deep cultural, culinary and ecological importance. Traditional fishermen used an extensive vocabulary to describe its life stages. The fish were called pua ama ama as they entered cultivated fish ponds. They returned to the ocean as a nai to spawn and reproduce when it was forbidden, or kapu, to harvest them. The language supported a sustainable fishing cycle, ensuring food was available for the long term. Traditional wisdom has also contributed to modern conservation efforts in New Zealand, Aotearoa, another biodiversity hotspot. Ancestral Maori sayings describe the importance of leaving certain shoots on the harakeke plant, known as the flax in English. This ensures that there's enough nectar for the birds who pollinate the plants, enabling a healthy crop. Biological, cultural and linguistic conservation can therefore work hand in hand. Researchers have also found that in biodiverse regions, over 75% of medicinal uses of plants are linguistically unique, known only to one local language. Given that nearly half of all modern medicines are derived from plants, there's a real possibility that the next life-saving drug could be lost. The revival of languages not only preserves information, it can also galvanise local conservation efforts. Hawaii has been deemed the extinction capital of the world, holding the record for the most extinct birds on the planet. It's also home to a severely endangered language, Hawaiian. By the 1980s, there were only a few dozen speakers left, and it was predicted that the language would be effectively dead by the year 2000. Now, perhaps, there is reason for hope. Efforts to revive the language mean that the number of Hawaiian speakers on the islands is slowly growing. The renaissance of both the language and the culture has encouraged people to look into the ecological practices of their ancestors, providing motivation for conservation projects across the island chain. In fact, some researchers believe that it is impossible to achieve large-scale conservation of species and ecosystems without incorporating local languages and cultures into conservation strategies. Humans and nature are not incompatible. Keeping people connected with their landscapes, speaking indigenous languages and practicing traditional sustainable ways of living can benefit all forms of life.